Greetings, Wanderer, and welcome to the Agora of Athens. I love this Agora. Where else could you find a common fish merchant and an extravagant jewelry seller within a few feet of each other? It's that kind of variety that makes city life so rich and exciting. The Agora is the beating heart of any Greek city. It is a place where all types of people may gather, from citizens and foreigners to magistrates and philosophers. All manner of business is conducted here, including political meetings, legal proceedings, and trade. When you finish exploring, come find me, and we can talk more. See you soon, Wanderer. Agora was the civic center of Athens, but it wasn't only frequented by politicians and city officials. The area housed a market where people could purchase food and other goods from merchants. It was also frequented by philosophers who used the public space to establish schools and pass on their teachings to students. Religion had its place as well, Temples dedicated to Hephaestus and Apollo were located in the Agora, along with the altar of the Twelve Gods and the monument of the eponymous heroes. The painted stoa, or stoa poikile, derived its name from the panel paintings on its wall. The paintings were created in the 5th century BCE by famous artists like Polygnotus and depicted Greek military victories like the Battle of Marathon. The stoa served as a public meeting place for citizens, but it was especially popular with philosophers who used the space to pass on their teachings. In 301 BCE, the philosopher Zeno of Kition chose the Stoa Poikile as the location for his school of philosophy, the appropriately dubbed Stoicism. Trade in the Agora was supervised by magistrates. There were five Agoranomoi who kept order in the market, controlled the quality of goods, and collected market dues. This provided revenue to the city and helped pay the magistrates and those in charge of maintaining order. The market benefited everyone. Customers bought what they needed, merchants made their living, and city officials received the money they needed to keep the wheels of democracy turning. The original temple of Apollo Patroas 
was built around 535 BCE by Pisistratos, but was destroyed by the Persians during their invasion a few decades later. It long remained in ruins, except for the altar, which was left standing as a reminder of the Persian sacrilege. Eventually, a new temple was built in the 4th century BCE. Inside was a statue made by Euphranor, the same artist who painted in the Stoa of Zeus. The temple held special significance in Athens, as it was connected to the origin of the city's people. The name Patroos, meaning fatherly, referenced the belief that Apollo was the father of Eon, founder of the Ionian Greeks, from whom all Athenians are descended. The temple of Hephaestos overlooks the Agora from the Colonus Agoraeus Hill. Today, it is one of the best preserved temples in Greece, owing to its conversion to a church in the Middle Ages. But while this transformation preserved the structure, it also damaged the surrounding sculptures. The temple was dedicated not only to Hephaestos, the god of metallurgy, but also to Athena Ergane, goddess of arts and crafts. Nearly every part of the Hephaestion was lavishly decorated with depictions of famous mythological events, like the labors of Theseus. The Theseus scenes gave the temple the nickname Theseon, a name that lives on today as a city district in Athens. The Bulaterion was another building in the Agora that contributed to the democratic process. It housed the Athenian Council of Citizens, the Boule. This council of 500 was composed of 50 members from each Greek tribe, all of whom served a one-year term. They were chosen by lot from among citizens over 30. Every month, one group of 50 was chosen to lead the Boule's executive committee, the Pritinaeus. The Pritaneus met every day of the month and called meetings of the full council in the Bulaterion, where they spent their time discussing bills.
The Prytaneion was one of the most important buildings in the Agora, as it was the headquarters of the Prytaneus. The Prytaneus was the executive committee of the Boule, who ran the city's daily operations. The Prytaneus dined in the Prytaneion, and 17 of them slept on site to ensure there were always officials available to deal with emergencies. The Prytaneion also housed the official weights and measures of the city. The fire of Hestia, which provided sacred fire for all public sacrifices, was also located there. The Heliaia was the most important court in Athens and was presided over by a group of judges called Heliasts. Judging was a regular part of an Athenian citizen's life with trials happening almost every day. Heliasts were chosen randomly based on two factors. First, that they were on the official list of 6,000 potential Heliasts. Second, that they were present at court on the day of the trial. A stipend of two obols was established by Pericles to compensate for the loss of work while on Helias duty, and also to encourage participation in the judiciary process. In the Agora, an Athenian could buy and sell many different products. The permanent retail market was divided into sections according to the category of merchandise. Merchants and craftsmen who worked in the market could be citizens, foreigners, or even freed slaves. They sold everything from food and clothes to jewelry and slaves. With so much variety, competition was fierce and that competition helped regulate the market's prices. The Heliaio wasn't the only court in Athens. This other court was located next to the South Stoa. Historians believe it to be a court based on the discovery of a nearby box containing seven bronze ballots. These ballots were used by jurors to give their verdicts. The reason trials were so common in Athens might have been related to their democratic regime, which promoted the individual's right to demand reparations for injustice. However, not all legal matters were settled in this fashion. If a claim was small enough, it was settled individually by a magistrate. Public trials were reserved for more serious offenses, such as murder, theft, and political crimes.
the mint was where the city made its coinage. It is believed that Athens' mint was in the city's agora, as modern excavations have turned up small disc-shaped pieces of metal used to make coins. Much of the silver required for minting coinage came from the Lavrion silver mines. Athens was so dependent on the mines that when they lost them during the Peloponnesian War, the city was forced to melt down a gold statue of Athena to mint gold coins and avert a monetary crisis. You have now experienced the Agora, following in the footsteps of countless Athenians before you. I hope the trip has impressed upon you how important this place was to trade, politics, and law. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Very well, let's begin. Which philosopher's school took its name from the painted stoa? Which philosopher's school took its name from the painted stoa? Yes, Zenon taught at the stoa, and so he and his followers were dubbed Stoics. Time for another question. What other name has the Iphistion gone by? The temple of Ephestos depicted scenes from the labors of Heracles, but it was never known as the Heraklion. Try again. Correct! The name was inspired by the scenes showing the hero Theseus, which decorate the temple. Only one question left. When Athens lost the Lavrion silver mines during the Peloponnesian War, which statue did they melt down to mint new coins? Correct! The Athenians melted down a statue of Athena to mint gold coins. It's clear you are very familiar with the Agora of Athens. I'm impressed. Farewell, Wanderer. May we see each other again soon. <laughs>